You know, I'm a nice guy. I usually try to stay positive with my reviews, even when talking about flaws. However, today I want to hunt something down. So I'm gonna review something bad. Like, really bad. Let's see, Apple losers most wanted or spike at your service. Nah, I already talked about those in my top 5 video. Maybe another day. Some pony to watch over me. Celestia, no, that wouldn't be a hunt. That would be a slaughter. Dust Dawn. Ah, I still need something for an eventual subspecial. Double Rain Room. We're getting closer, but no. I got it. The micro series Rainbow Dash issue. In my episode reviews, I usually don't recap the entire episode as I think it's a waste of time. If people watch a review, I can usually assume that they watched the episode beforehand. The same is not true for comic issues. Not everyone likes to read them, especially as the status of canon is up to debate. If you haven't read this piece of garbage, I will not spoil the entire thing for you. Don't worry, it's not much of a loss. It's the Summerfell Festival in Ponyville, another festival for silver quids and firebrands drinking game. The Wonderbolts are performing, but the true star of the show is a local favorite, Rainbow Dash, and her famous Sonic Rainboom. Wait... Is... Is that a freaking... Is that a freaking guitar? Is Rainbow Dash playing a guitar while performing a Sonic Rainboom? Hey, kid, wanna know how shark jumping looks like? There you go! And this is only the first page of this piece of horse apples. This is... You know, you can try too hard. Rainbow Dash is cool, isn't she? How can we make her look even cooler? Give her a freaking guitar! Okay, Human Dash plays the guitar, but she doesn't break the sound barrier while performing. Think about it, Rainbow Dash performs a Sonic Rainboom, with an emphasis on Sonic. Even if we assume that Rainbow Dash is able to play a guitar while performing a Sonic Rainboom, probably no one is able to hear or see it. So does it add anything to her performance? No. No, it just looks dumb. Anyway, Rainbow Dash goes 20% faster. Get it? Subtle, isn't it? Causing her to lose control and crashing into a dark storm cloud, which clearly shouldn't be there. You know, as weather is managed by Hoof in Equestria and there is an air show going on, I'm pretty sure someone would notice this thing as soon as it appeared. And apparently going 20% faster during a Sonic Rainbow put too much of a strain on her wings, making them unusable. Seriously? Later on it states that she was unable to fly for a whole week because of this. What the fuck? This doesn't make any sense. How did this happen? Rainbow Dash always pushes her limits. Fair enough. But being unable to fly because she flew too fast is... It's just stupid. I can only think of one instance where something similar happened. And you don't want to go there, comic, do you? It wouldn't be so much of a problem if Rainbow Dash broke her wing in a crash or something like that. After all, something similar happened in Read It and Weep. But basically overusing her wings? Kind of stretches the suspension of disbelief there. In the dark storm cloud, a spooky voice scares Rainbow off. I want to point out that it seems rather uncharacteristic of Rainbow Dash to be scared off that easily, but it's the least of this comic's problems. Rainbow Dash is saved by Spitfire, who points out that Rainbow Dash was gone for a while. And she didn't go after her. Why? You would think she would be more worried about her friend that vanished in a dark and spooky cloud that clearly shouldn't be there. Anyway, she brings Rainbow Dash to the ground, where she's interviewed by a Pony News Network reporter. Apparently there's television in Equestria. One thing I didn't mention so far is the dialogue. It's stupid. It feels like a five-year-old wrote it. Rainbow Dash says things like, I'm Pony Newsman Hickory Infused Awesome Souls. Trademark. That's a direct quote and I'm going to leave it dangling here like a corpse on a gibbet while we consider that someone charged actual money to write it. This is but one example. If I were to point out every bit of dumb dialogue in this comic I would be here all day. Rainbow Dash breaks that she can handle the cloud and guess what happens. Rainbow Dash is the only pony that tries to make this cloud go away and feels miserable. In the end, 
it stays there for 28 days. Not only that, every pony in town is depressed because of this and they blame Rainbow Dash as she is not able to handle the cloud as she promised. We also learn that cloud gremlins are behind the entire thing. Like every other monster in Equestria, they feed off negative emotions. And to be honest, those two are the one thing I kinda like about this comic. Ah, I never find more to bask in the haunting glow of the ruination and melancholy of these poor equine foods. Looks like the pesky one is trying something else today. She will not give up. Perfect. We don't even need to ask. They simply hand over their worst feelings. What fools these ponies be? While the names are never stated in this issue, they are officially named Big Boy and Runt. Guess which is rich. While the dialogue is not extraordinarily clever, it kinda fits, and it's not as cringe-worthy as most lines in this comic. I also like their design. I could actually imagine characters like these in the show as a duo of recurring comedic villains that screw with the main six from time to time. I could even see them as a real threat. Yet they don't work in this issue. Why? Well, simple, because the stakes are way too high for micro-series issue. The other issues of the micro-series are about personal conflicts. Not a threat for an entire town. And Rainbow Dash deals with this thing alone for almost a month. Why does no pony help her? Why does no pony else try to do something? This cloud is a legit threat. The Wonderbots were in town. Why didn't they do anything? Aren't they something like Celestia's task force? Why doesn't Twilight show up? Heck, if there is a magical cloud that threatens her subject for weeks, even Celestia would probably be willing to do something for once. It just doesn't make any sense that Rainbow Dash fights the cloud alone. The only other important character that makes an appearance is Applejack to confirm that the situation is actually pretty dire, as the cloud indeed affects her harvest pretty badly. So why does any pony think it's a good idea to let Rainbow Dash handle it on her own. After a couple of failed attempts, she is finally able to spot one of the gremlins and there is a short fight scene. After she failed to defeat them again and now aware of the fact that the cloud is fueled by negative emotions, she figures that she has to shear up the entire town to defeat the gremlins. So of course she asks Pinkie Pie to organize a giant party. No, that would actually be the reasonable thing to do. Instead, she has a small conversation with Tank, telling him that she will do something more dangerous than going 20% faster, and that she might never fly again, with the implication that she might die as well. And performs, now get this, a double rain boom. I want to remind you, this is an official piece of My Little Pony merchandise, and the similarities to this train wreck of a fan episode are stunning. Dumb dialogue, characters act like idiots, Rainbow Dash rings getting crippled because the plot says so, and of course a freaking double rainbow. Fun fact, this comic was released on March 20th, 2013, 10 days before the official release of Double Rainbow. However, the double rainbow in this comic doesn't new pony the likes of one in the animation. Instead, it turns every apple on Ajax's farm into a zap apple. Somehow. The gremlins make two pointless reference that fail to make me laugh and are defeated. AJ catches Rainbow Dash, we cut it two months later, and Rainbow Dash was unable to fly at that time. AJ makes some fun of her, but she is up with zap apple deserts, which allows her to fly again. Then they go on a trip to sell these Rainbow Dash themed deserts to every pony else in town. While they don't flirt or anything like that, all the interactions somehow screamed shipping to me. I'm not sure why, maybe it's the last panel. It really seems like the end of a ship fic. And now you owe me. You can start by flying us around for a while, I feel like some wind in my mane. Whatever makes you happy, AJ, whatever makes you happy. 
Anyway, let's wrap things up. This comic is an epic fail. Every character acts like an idiot, the dialogue is horrible dumb and nothing that happens makes any sense. It feels like a badly written fanfiction, written by someone who only watched a few random meme clips on YouTube. It reminds me a lot of Double Rainbow and the fact that it actually features, well, a Double Rainbow certainly doesn't help. But putting the bad writing aside, the gremlins are actually a pretty decent idea. They would work as a villain in a main series issue. But they simply don't fit into a micro comic that only focuses on one character. The micro series is about slice of life stories and they don't work with villains that threatens all of our heroines if only one character can play a major role. But what about you? Did you read this piece of garbage? Any intention to defend it? Let me know in the comments. I am Tricky Fox. Do the foxy thing and don't read this comic. Sly as a fox, you got me under your spell. But you know I'll never tell that I know you know so well. You just